Street of Shame explores the lives of a group of women working in Dreamland, a brothel in Yoshiwara. The Japanese government is under renewed pressure to pass a bill that will render prostitution as an illegal activity. The film is a take on the intricacies and challenges of the law and how it has a direct hand in affecting the livelihoods of women who, in the line of work, are shunned as deviants, but also find that the options out there leave much to be desired. The film touches on a range of theories of deviants. Rachel will first discuss Merton's strain theory. I will then touch on the reading, dealing, and desire. Lastly, Azmi will look into the stigmatization faced by these women. As the quote at the start has pointed out, prostitution has been around in Japan for over 300 years. As poverty is a major problem in Japan, many women engage in prostitution to earn more money. In the film, there are at least two women working to support their family or pay off their debts. This behaviour can be understood by Merton strain theory, where there is a discrepancy between socially engendered goals and the availability of legitimate means to achieve such goals. Where earning money is an acceptable cultural goal, the institutionalised means to achieve it through prostitution is rejected. Hence, prostitution is a form of innovation. In the film, the sex workers find it unacceptable that their means of earning money may become illegal. どうやってお金貯める。ニコヤンになって、いいよ、いとまけでもするか、よりえ。ミッキー。お前怒っかいとする。どうだ。分かったかい。本当にお前たちのことを心配してんのは俺たち業者だ。こうやって店を作って、商
Like the film, Dealing in Desire looks into how women involved in sex work would be better off than if they were to work in factories. The reading also explains how mummies oversee the workers to make sure that they are taken care of, whether in terms of their finances, safety or well-being. In this passage, the author Kimberly K. writes, The bar owners and madams at all four bars believed that they had a duty to care for their employees. It was the key factor that made sex work seem like a viable option, in sharp contrast to the beatings and the withholding of wages that workers experience in factories. This is similar to what the film captures, that the brothel keeper considers himself as a social worker and looks over the well-being of the women. This is not the only scene that shows this. When Yasumi was attacked by her client, other people came to her rescue to chase him down. A doctor was then brought to attend to her to make sure she was well. This would likely not have happened under the harsh treatments of factory work. Kimberly K writes in her book, In contrast to findings in previous studies that describe sex work as dangerous labor rife with competition, the vast majority of the workers in my study believed in and succeeded in creating a collaborative work environment. Workers shared clothing, tips on how to engage with clients, and life stories that nurtured strong ties among them. Dealing in desire uncovers how those working in the sex industry look out for one another. The same is portrayed in the film in many examples. But in the end, you can see how Mickey empathized with the young and new worker offering her guidance. It is perhaps no coincidence because it was Mickey who's the one other worker we see new to Dreamland. Let us now explore how the film portrays the social stigma faced by their women. Social stigma is the extreme disapproval of an individual based on social characteristics that are perceived to distinguish them from other members of society. Although a stigma is normally associated with a group or a character trait, what makes it a stigma is a social perception of being associated with the group and people who experience stigmatization receive different treatment than others in the society. A bad experience from the different treatment as a result of social stigma will cause one to put on different pieces to avoid being labeled as part of the group that is being stigmatized. Here, Yumiko avoided letting her son see her working at Dreamland. Yumiko would need to put on a different act when she is around her son. She avoided her son at that moment as there was no way or time she could put on an act for her son that could disassociate herself from being portrayed as a sex worker. At this moment, Yumiko did not have a backstage to retreat to. あんたはいい年して苦労してんだって。元々でばみんなあの子のためじゃないの。
I could see what Kimiko was trying to avoid when her son eventually caught her in her front stage, by which then he was labelled in his mind his mother to be a deviant. You can see her son's reaction as he tries to disassociate himself from his mother, whom he considers to be a social stigma. Yumiko isn't the only character to face stigmatization. Miki's association as a sex worker also caused her family to be stigmatized by society. Her brother was not able to obtain a job in the government office and her sister's marriage would be cancelled if she did not quit her job. We could see how Miki's involvement as a sex worker has led to the stigmatization of her family. The film addresses social stigma in many other parts such as this eating place where she felt ashamed when the owner spotted her as a sex worker even when she isn't working. Point is, stigma is about social control. The association towards a group or trait is deemed as deviant by the perception the society has on it. This perception could change with different societies and time. In fact, 1956 coincides with the enactment of the anti-prosecution law in Japan, months after the release of this film. This was the last film Kenzi Mizuguchi directed and the media no doubt had an impact in how society perceived support for or against the passing of the law. Was this Mizuguchi's intent? We do not know for sure, for he passed on later in the same year as well. What do you think?